All right, hello everybody. My name is Isaiah Garcia, and today I will be talking about the incredible Upper Wall Kimmerer, who has controversial views about our environment and relationship with it uh, on how to do better. Uh, so a little bit about the author, and please uh, pardon me that these next couple of slides are going to be a little bit wordy, but uh, I they provide great context for the remaining of the uh, uh, video. So Robert Wall Kimmerer is an author, botanist, professor of environmental biology, and tribal member of the Potawatomi Nation. Uh, she's a well proclaimed author. When most walkers or nature enthusiasts think about her writings, if they've read, as one walks along trails or experiences the essence of nature. So she's very big among the, the walking community. Um, she has two, she has written two books, Braiding Sweetgrass and Gathering Moss, where I'll be focusing today on Braiding Sweetgrass, her recent book that was published in 2013. And uh, oh, side note that she is a member of the Potawatomi Nation where her indigenous roots and their emblem is actually in the top right corner. Uh, and finally, her prose in this book that I will be focusing on is changing the average being on how to experience and respect nature. It is not a list of demands of what to do. It is what to know, and understand the history of nature and humans that is left on the ground where humus has the same roots as humility or uh, human and soil, uh, what is left on the soil of the ground and how it got there and what is that story, understanding that and feeling it. Uh, some awards that she has received in her writing um, is the John Burroughs Medal for Gathering Moss, her first book, where John Burroughs is a nature essayist, uh, well-proclaimed environmentalist that's taught uh, throughout the United States. And Braiding Sweetgrass, um, it's a uh, second book that she wrote and received the Sigrid Olson Nature Writing Award. And what's special about this one was Sigrid Olson is an environmentalist and also essayist where he, an author of the book's Listening Point and uh, The Singing Wilderness. And when someone receives this award, it's the act of either transforming or cultivating his ideas in a way of, better understand, of a better understanding for future listeners to grasp on. Um, she's also uh, the author of numerous essays among, about moss and restoration that are peer-reviewed and taught at the university level across the country. Um, so Robin is an enrolled member of the citizen Padawat Padawatomi Nation. And the Padawatomi Nation is actually located in the Great Plains of Minnesota, Wisconsin. Their interaction with Western culture or the Europeans was sometime around the 17th century. Uh, they're a large part of the Algonquian family, uh, which is a big tribe that was all throughout the United States. And this is a extension of the Algonquian family. Uh, they have their own language and separate rituals where they sustain their own gardens and hunted uh, during the summertime and winters for food. Uh, they had a strong sense on how to treat the environment. And in my argument, I will be discussing of how that influenced Robert Wald Kimmerer's ideas uh, that she proclaims today on how to act in the nature. Uh, so being part of that tribe, she learned ideas that Western civilization does not emphasize as much, and reciprocity is one. But reciprocity is uh, the act of giving back from receiving. So we take the fruits and the, the greatness of uh, what nature gives to us, berries and fruits and vegetables, but uh, the act of giving it back, not just planting seeds to receive gifts, but to give it the same amount of fruits that it gives us. Um, sustainability. Uh, taking very little from the environment and living. Um, sovereignty of being, and we went over this in our class where it's a self-governed self person, self-governed human, and in Robert Wall Kimmerer's case, it's the sovereignty, it's the self-managed, self-sustaining organism that we do, uh, that nature does not need human involvement to live. So they have a sovereignty sense and we also have a sovereignty sense. Um, and two ideas that are very uh, big right now is the restoration of land and our relationship with land and the introduction of the it world as well. That will be explained in this future video that will show you right now. That is uh, with another ecologist, uh, Richard Powers. Uh, all right, start off this video. She's a very soft-spoken uh, speaker, but powerful where you feel her emotions. So enjoy. That 
we either think that the world is a source of belongings all for us or it is a most profound sense of belonging um whether we came from it i love um in your chapter the three sisters how you say um they should be writing the story it, it, it should be them who tell this story. And then in another chapter, you talk about, it's all about the pronouns. Um, could you talk about those two things and leave them together? Yes. Um, if, if there are scientists in the room, and I know there, there are, and heck, any just speaker of English, the notion that, especially in, in, in our scientific technical writing, that we must it the world, that these, these beloved teachers, these, these, these sources of knowledge for us, we can refer to only with great distance as, as to be objective and to call them it, whether we're doing technical writing or whether we're speaking English, we have to it the world. And, you know, just to bring that home, I would never say of my dear friend, it is sitting at the table. <laughs> right? That, I'm sorry. I mean, that's, that's rude. I, I've, I've taken something away from you and made you no different than this table. Um, and that is, in English, how we are um, constrained, aren't we, um, to speak of the living world, um, that we it nature. We have no other way to do it. And it, it strikes me as the perfect language for capitalism. Oh, yeah. There's a, there's a mo Very powerful. Very emotional. And uh, so I'm going to tie with that idea of itting the world, of how humans it nature and the world uh, into two excerpts of our book. And uh, I'm going to read to you the second paragraph. And this is a chapter called Sitting in a Circle, where she does little experiments of going out into her garden and a few other trails around uh, the East Coast. And she talks to plants and trees. Let me read this to you real quick. In gathering roots, just plunging in will get you nothing but a hole. We have to unlearn hurrying. This is all about slowness. First we give, then we take. Whether it's cattails or birch or roots, the students have gotten used to the pre-harvest ritual invoking the honorable harvest. Some close their eyes and join me, and some realize it's a good time to fumble through their backpacks for a missing pencil. I murmur to the spruces who I am and why I've come, using bits of pot of water, Watami and bits of English. I asked her kind permission for digging. I asked that they share with these dear young people what only they can give, their physical bodies and their teachings. I'm asking for something more than roots and leave a little tobacco in return. So in that paragraph, she has a interaction with a spruce tree and in return talks to the plant or the tree as a human, uh, telling him your first telling them their name, speaking different languages with them, uh, to, uh, to them, uh, me using the it and them, it's all about the pronouns, and uh, leaving something in return, practice of reciprocity, which is something I explained just before. And another reading that talks about uh, her idea of eating the world um, is a small sentence. Traditional harvesters who recognize the individuality of each tree as a person. A, a non-human forest person. Trees are not taken, but requested. And something very important in there uh, that I believe I I'm obligated to read, sometimes the answer is no. That trees have the power and the option of saying no. And it shows sometimes visually where uh, deforestation occurs and the land is literally dying, turning black. And that is a way of nature saying, this is not right, this is not what you should do, and simply no. So her ideas of our relationship with the land are very negative. And in small instance, uh, in small cases of a traditional harvester, harvesters talking about trees and her teaching her kid or teaching her students on um, talking to a plant and saying certain things of creating a valuable relationship. And uh, some examples that I thought Emma Morris uh, showcases very well is uh, towards the end of the chapter, a menu of new goals where she lists the goals on how to live in a better ecosystem. Um, she states the idea of land ethic, which is an idea posed by 
Aldo Leopold, and it discusses that um, we humans, plants, and animals are all living in business together. When we see land as a community to which we belong, we may begin to use it with love and respect. And this is from the book, Rambunctious Garden, Saving Nature in a Post, post Wild World. And that idea with land ethic, uh, I believe Robin Wall Kimmerer Kimmer would deny with the fact that it's a business, but it's literally a community living simultaneously with plants, that there's no difference in each other. And also her idea is a baseline where we put limitations on nature and where we believe that it should be at on pristine wilderness. And uh, Robin Wall Kimmerer simply says we cannot tell them uh, we cannot tell nature on how to act. We cannot uh, create baselines for nature where it gives us gratitude and respect where we should be giving it the same uh, amount with decisions. Ending with the uh, enemy or the people that deny or stop Robin Wall Kimmerer's ideas, it's simply Western culture and industrial ideology. Before I ever read Britain's Sweetgrass, I always thought as nature as it. And I walked by in the city and literally saw nothing as nature. But with ideas as American progress, which is a painting actually in the bottom right corner with the angel flying with the electrical line. It's a painting done by John Guest. As Western civilization pushes more west, the world becomes enlightened. And Robert Wall Kimmerer simply says that is not true. Anthropogenic activities is not respectful towards nature and Literally nothing is beneficial about that. And with the other pictures of uh, the man that's tied by strings, uh, the industrial uh, power plant that's right there, and the baseline of temperature change. And uh, a very important quote that I thought I should say from Emma Maris's book, rich Westerners especially must quit tapping into nature at such furious pace to satisfy the frivolous desires of their consumer society. Robert Wall Kimmerer, believes in sustainability, reciprocity, and with doing these things in this picture and believing in the Western culture, we are eating the world. We are limiting nature to a sense that it is, they are so powerful that they teach us life lessons and we're still overpowering it and it's a sense of belonging to, uh, to humans and the people in charge, which is in result causing climate change, deforestation, and other harmful and disastrous acts toward nature. I just wanted to say thank you for your time and thank you for listening. Uh, I, and also I just wanted to consider a possible solution or a possible act that I believe was like uh, tying in Robert Wall Kimmerer's ideas and the indigenous roots that are in with her to with a blend of what we uh, personally I have witnessed in my classes talking about Western culture and is to go out for about 15 minutes a day if you go out walking, if you're a big walker and talk to a plant among your uh, journey, among your 15 minute walk and talk to them for about a five minute conversation. I did this for a class after I read a braiding sweetgrass last semester, it was an assignment and I had to write a seven page essay about it. So my conversation was with uh, the medicinal herb, marijuana. So I decided to talk to marijuana and um, also other plants from where I live. I live in the, uh, the countryside. So there's a lot of trails where I live. And I believe doing this process for three days and talking to them for five minutes will create a personal relationship with the words, reciprocity, sustainability, and the concept of eating the world, of where your mindset you might have not known, but was in the but was in the frame of not giving nature the respect and the the gratitude that it has given us for the the, uh, the amount of years that we have been living from Earth, and uh, yeah. So whenever you're out exploring nature, look around, focus on your relationship with it, and just rather than empowering it. And I believe that activity that I just put forth, uh, that I mentioned, uh, whoever's listening to do. And I believe it'll create a great insight for uh, future uh, endeavors. And to end on a quote, to love a place is not enough, we must find ways to heal it. That's by Robert Wall Kimmerer. 
and a radical change needs to happen for us to get out of this fitting the world uh, concept and what Western culture is telling us to do with uh, the basics of capitalism. And just wanted to say thank you for your time. Thank you for listening and hope to be better. Thank you guys.